The strangeness started not far into the next period. Mr. Chu was reading us Holes, which if you haven't read it, it is an awesome book. When the morning began, he glanced up from the page. Tyler, if you don't like the story, you can at least keep quiet for those who are listening. Tyler's spark held up more hands. Wasn't me. And from the surprise expression on his face, he actually seemed to be telling the truth. With a skeptical glance, Mr. Chu resumed his reading. Not a minute later, another moan rang out, this one louder than the first. Mr. Chu stopped. If you can't be more mature, I'll stop reading right now. No, cried the class. Cheyenne raised her head, hand. When Mr. Chu called on her, she said, I think the noise is coming from over here. She pointed to the heating vents, low on the wall beside her desk. The other kid in her row, Jackson, Hannah, and a new student named Asmi, all leaned toward the wall, listening. For a while, nothing happened. Then, just as Mr. Chu started to speak, another moan welled up. It sounded creepy, like a cross between an evil spirit and a dog with tummy trouble. Jackson crinkled his nose. Ew, it smells kind of funky over here. Maybe you shouldn't have had bean burritos for lunch, said Big Pete with a laugh. Tyler cackled and reached across the aisle to feed to bump fist. Settle down, gentlemen, said Mr. Chu. He was way too polite. Gentlemen distracts Pete and Tyler like short stuff distracts. LeBron James. Our teacher slipped a bookmark into the book, then rose and approached the funky side of the room. His nostrils flared. Well now, it does smell funny over here. Does anyone have a moldy sandwich in their desk? Head shook. A sick wombat? By then, a whiff of the smell had reached my room. Funny was pointing it mildly. The stench was a mix of red cat, moldy sweat socks, and rancid cheese. Lucky thing it was faint, or we would have to abandon the classroom. The new girl asked me, slammed in her chair. We are in for it now. What do you mean? asked Jackson. Isn't it obvious, she said. What? said Benny. Moans and strange smells are two signs of haunting. Several kids beat their fingernails, bunnies twisted the front of his t-shirt. Tyler stopped, right, and was truly haunted by the ghost of some kid who died from a bean burrito overdose. Big Pete giggled. He was really wording that joke. Or by the ghost of Simon Jenkins, said Mr. Chu quietly. Bunny blanched, who's Simon Jenkins, casting his gaze over the class to make sure everyone was li listening. Mr. Chu said it happened just before I came here. Poor kid, he, he died from fright from a pop quiz. Several of my classmates groaned. Mr. Chu shushed them. Now I... I'm sure the smell isn't from anything supernatural, probably just some critter that crawled into the heating system and got stuck. Hannah shivered suddenly and asked me notice. Cold spots, she said, another sign of her spirit presence. Her eyes were as big as a duck as a pear, or plums in yogurt. Also the sign of an open window, Benny muttered. But his joke sounded hollow. I knew for a fact that the whole idea of ghosts weeded him out. My uncle stayed in a haunted house once, said Tina Green. He still has nightmares to this day. Several kids fidgeted in their seats. Cheyenne twisted a lock of her hair. Like I said, I'm sure it's Mr. Chu began. 
my grandma saw a ghost in Hawaii. The night my shares, said Zizi Lee, it turned her hair all white. Ooh, said several of her friends. As me looked gloomier than a Monday in January. It's harder to get rid of girls. Sometimes even priests can't help. How can you know so much about it? I asked. Yes, yeah, said Tyler. What makes you the expert? As me gave him a slow blink. And I noticed her dark mascara. An odd choice for a fourth grader. But it matched her black jeans and black t-shirt, which read, I like you, I'll eat you last. My mother makes monsters, she, is, she said, so I should know. Tyler snorted. Right. We uh, already covered monsters before recess, said Mr. Chu, looking a bit rattled. Remember the Gordon? I guess he found the idea of someone being in the monster beast. A wee bit unsettling. Fancy that. Benny's gaze met mine. This info about Esme's mom was news. Assuming Esme wasn't a wannabe dwarf who liked to make stuff up, I promised myself to look into it soon. What kind of monster? Tina asked Esme. The drudge asaurus, said our teacher. It hides under your bed and eats all the books you won't want to read. Huh? said Tina. That's not a real Tyler began. Clapping his hands, Mr. Chu said, All right now, enough girls and ghoulies. I'll talk to Mr. Decker and I'm sure he'll take care of the situation. In the meantime, let's try to ignore the poor critter in the dark's and get back to Stanley Leonard's. He picked up holes and resumed reading, and after jumping at a few last moans, my jittery classmates finally settled down to listening, but I still couldn't concentrate. I wondered, A, what connection did Esme have to whatever had moved into our school? B, could it be a girl's? And C, if so, could a ghost have caused Jose's freaked out and coma? Like a student who forgot to do the homework, I didn't have any answers, but I did not I did know where to start looking for them, and I vowed to go there with Benny right after school. If downtown Monterosa were a hipster's head, then amazing facts comics and more would be the cool hat that topped it. Located just off Main Street in a funky green and black building, it was packed with enough comics, games, and magic supplies to eat up a hundred lifetimes worth of allowance money. As soon as Benny and I pushed open the door, a speaker deep inside the store played the first war bus of the Indiana Jones team. Like always, it made me feel a teeny bit more heroic. Hey, it's my two favorite customers, said Mrs. Tamasisi, the owner. She swiveled her trick-out purple wheelchair around from where she'd been working on a female superhero's display. How's it, boys? Hey, Mrs. T, Benny called. She was the most famous person I'd ever met, much more so than my bratty little sister Veronica, who had a role on a Disney Channel series. Veronica had only been on a show for a month, but Mrs. Tamasisi had ruled the wow woman of wrestling circuit for years as the Samoan slammer until an accident landed her in the chair. We just got the newest Spider-Man, Carlos, Mrs. Tamasisi Green. Oh, that butter bit of more than he can chew this time. She tended to talk about superheroes like they were old wrestling buddies. Can't wait, I said, but first. Mrs. T held up a powerful hand. Let me guess, things are getting fitty at Monterosa Elementary again. 
Not only she, a charming wizard, but Mrs. Tamasisi was also our go-to expert on the supernatural. Well, it's like you are psychic, Bunny said. Psycho, maybe. She made a goofy face. Then her expression grew serious. Mrs. Tamasisi glanced right and left, motioning us to join her in a quieter part of the store. This monster stuff is happening more and more often. I think there's something wrong with the town. Hell yeah, said Bunny. Not nearly enough ice cream shops. I elbowed him. We noticed too. Something's up. Mrs. T leaned forward. So what is it this time? Were panthers giant spiders? We are not sure, I said. Maybe those. Bunny gave an involuntary shudder. It all started this morning. We filled her in and in on the happenings in our classroom and on Jose's coma. Jeez, poor kid, Mrs. Tomasisi toyed with an earring. I've never heard of girls putting someone into a coma before, but the rest does sound like the classic signs of a haunting. Benny ran a shaky hand through his hair. Really? But you don't believe in girls, right? She shifted her brawny shoulders. Why not? Just because we can't see something doesn't mean it isn't there. You can't see electricity either, but stick a fork in the toaster and you will shock your sock off. I'll check around. The nearest shoppers were out of earshot. This was good because I felt kind of funny talking about girls. So how do we get rid of it? I asked. Beats me, Mrs. T shuddered, shrugged, pulling out her smartphone. Who you gonna call? I said, Ghostbusters? The store owner made a you are not as funny as you think face. I'm looking it up online. Seriously, said Bunny, I thought you said that all the best supernatural info is in dusty old books. Typing in her search word like with lightning thumbs, she said it is because but there's that's no reason to turn up your nose at the internet. Honey girl, her flush fluffy calico cat, and both up and rubbed against Mrs. T's feet purring. She scratched it behind the ears. Let's see. Okay, that's they're smudging. Like smudging a stretch, said Bunny. He sniffed from foot to foot. How do you smudge what you can't even see? Nah, it means burn sage or herbs to cleanse the area, said Mrs. T. Agreements. If this thing is strong enough to knock someone out, I don't think stinky smoke will drive it away. Or you could ask it to leave, she continued. Yeah, that worked, said Bunny. He put on a sugary voice. Pretty please with sugar on top. Will you stop haunting our school? His words were sarcastic, but he was biting his thumbnail. Honey Joe leaped up onto Mrs. T's lap for more in-depth padding. Or you could call in the professional, said the store owner. A priest for an exorcism or a medium for a seance. Benny and I made the same skeptical face. We tried an exorcism on Mr. Chu when he was turning into a werehina. And all it got us was grief and detention. That left one choice. So tell us, what exactly is a seance?